Hi and welcome to Gamers Web Unboxed. Today we're going to be looking at Infernal Investigations Posse Set for Wild West Exodus from War Cradle Studios. Okay, I've been waiting for this for quite a while because I play Lawman and the Infernal Investigations are an extension of the Lawman faction. Okay, look at the cover. There's the leader of um, the uh, faction and there's a faction logo at the bottom. And on the back of the faction is um, renders of the six models. So in the box you get Helena Miller, Ida Saxon, Furio Montoya, Jedrick Powell, Black Hoof 2020 and Mercury Jones. Okay, and um, I'm going to go onto this in a minute. I'm just going to take the lid off and we'll have a look what we've got inside. Okay, as always with um, the faction and posse sets, um, this comes with a slipcase. Take the slipcase off and inside we have a really nice box which has got a wooden finish and the Wild West Exodus logo em um, embossed on the front of it. Okay, fantastic. Right, boxes are great for storing your figures in. I use them for painting actually, they're, but they're fantastic. Uh, then we've got a flyer uh, which tells you more about uh, Wild West Exodus and um, basically gives you uh, the information you need to assemble your figures. So you turn over on the back, a little bit of information about the Wild West Exodus again. Download the rules for free and download unit cards, although this does actually come with the unit cards. And use the QR code or the website address there to actually download the instructions for these as a free PDF. Okay, I'm going to leave the cards aside at one moment because we don't need them. Right, I'm going to do this in two separate stages because um, a lot of these parts are very small and fiddly. And, um, some of them have come off in the bags in transit, so I'm just going to actually do it separately. I'm going to assemble the miniatures and then show you them assembled. Okay, so we get two of the medium bases and four of the small bases. These bases are brilliant because they're lit, they're like a trophy base, they're fantastic. All the bases um, for the Wild West Exodus range are really, really good. Okay, and here we have now our first bag of three, which contains, if I can just open it, Okay, in this bag we have Furio Montoya and um, Ida Saxon. Okay, so as you can see, the detail is a very sharp and crisp, really well animated, extremely little amount of flash, very little flash at all on them, which is great. Uh, detail on the guns, fantastic. Okay, and the next bag, next part of the bag, we have the extensions there for Helena Miller. So she's got an owl that sits on her shoulder. As you can see, fantastic. Really great detail, especially on the owl. And I love her face. Her face is really expressionative. Expressionative. Expressive. So I'm making up cromulent words again. And there are the um, extra parts for Furio uh, Montoya. So there's our two weapons and our arm and a cloak. Okay, so that's that one. Now, as I say, I'm going to do this in two parts because some of these pieces have actually come off in the bags. Um, but I'll bring them back and show you them when they're assembled. And this bag has quite a lot of pieces in, and this is the one that's got the pieces that's has it come, across, come off. Okie dokie, right. That's a ponytail, which you can hardly see because it's so small. And these two characters are the leader of the faction, which is uh, Helena Miller. She's got access to all the latest equipment and stuff. As you can see here, she's armed with a jump pack. There's the jump pack uh, flu plumes that are coming into uh, an exhaust plume at the bottom. Really, really good attention to detail. And there is her body. And arms and legs. Just trying to get it so it can focus properly for you. Okay, okay. And then finally, we have. 
um, the heads and the jetpacks and other arms and hands there and there's a crate of that um, Mercury Jones is actually diving over so I'm not sure if I said it but these two characters are um, Helen Miller who's the leader of the faction and Mercury Jones okay I'm just going to leave those to one side now for the moment and concentrate on the last two characters okay and I'm going to just go open on the table because I've got a nice black cloth down so you should be able to get better detail from them. Okay, so we have here um, Black Huff 2020. He's a construct. He's a war horse construct. Um, there's the, his head, tail, arms. Um, so he's actually carrying a very large gun, um, which is quite good. And then we also have here um, Jedrick Powell very mysterious mysterious stranger type guy he's got a shredded past again brilliant attention to detail I mean, look at the, the the actual breastplate and the expression on his face fantastic and then we have other bits and pieces for Jedrick Powell such as his, his leg and his cloak and then finally these are pieces for um, his guns okay so all this stuff is on the um, website so you can just go to the wildwestexodus.com and download the assembly PDF for free and away you go and once I've finished this part I'm going to get the review done oh, sorry the uh, assembly done of the miniature so you can have a look okay now onto the meat of the matter go to the cards Okay, as with all the Wild West Exodus cards, you get your character cards, an investigator, the posse card, an armory card, and a condition card. So we're just going to look at the armory cards and condition cards. So first of all, there's the Lawman Faction card. It's got all the alternate weapons and the effects that they all have in the game and the coin costs. And on the back it just says Lawman Armory. And if you look at the top, it says it's for version 1.08, which is the latest version. Uh, so we have negative conditions, disordered, hazard, stunned, and then positive conditions, on lookout, hunkered, and yellow check. That's standard in all the boxes. Okay, Infernal Investigations themed posse card. Um, you get one of these posse cards in every faction box. And this one is no exception. Um, so, Helena Miller's posse, uh, in a lawman force, instead of a fossum pa f faction posse, Helena Miller may take a theme posse. Uh, five or more slots are filled with at least one unit in the posse, then all units in that posse gain the prestigious common rule. Helen Miller is the only unit with boss trait permitted in this posse. Okay, so um, you've got six models and you can flit all of those in here because um, they've all got the Infernal Affairs trait on their cards. So basically, you have a full posse here, which gets the prestigious rule, which makes them extremely tough. Then on the back of the thing, you've just got another law manufacturer uh, posse card, which allows you to just you mix and match from um, the rest of your models, if you've got them. Okay. And we'll get onto the cards now. Helena Miller herself. Okay, so um, uh, common traits are she's got boss, lawman, human female, martial, infernal affairs, flight, and agent. She's got a fortune of four. She's got a quick of five, a mind of seven, attack of six, grit of six, fight of six, and a limit of three, which is pretty good, really, for um, a boss. Okay, she's got um, a lasso, which uh, has got a range of six, um, piercing zero, rate of attack one. Um, she's got an iron asp baton, which has got a piercing minus one and a range rate of attack of one. And she's got Tesla storm throwers, which are twin linked and have a range of 10, piercing two, rate of attack three. Sorry, piercing minus two. They are really, really good. Okay. And our other cards on the back, other rules on the back. She's got metal, quick of the dead, largesse, target priority, agile, and moving target. 
and our special rules are Tin Man, Dead or Alive, Headhunter, Elusive, Treasure Hunter, and Tactical Brilliance. And she's on a medium base. This is a game breaker. She's a very, very hard character. Very, very good. And having four fortune is fantastic. Especially when you add her with the rest of her posse, who all have one fortune each. Which means you're going to be dealing nine fortune every turn. Okay, I just get on to the next card, which is Black Hoff 2020. He's a sport, lawman, machine, automata, infernal affairs, Black Hoof agent. He's got a fortune of one, uh, quick of six, mind of four, attack of six, guts of six, grits of six. Um, I keep almost wanting to say guts for some reason, because it sounds more more wild westy. But anyway, uh, he's got a fight of five and he's got a, li a little limit of three. And he's got um, his hammer hands are a close combat, so they're going to be best to base combat uh, contact with a piercing of minus one and a rate of attack of two. And his hyper five, a uh, half a five or hyper viva rifle has got a range of 18, rate of attack one, and minus three on its uh, piercing, which is quite deadly. And again, he's got uh, tough, quick and the dead, durable, dead eye, and target priority. Special rules are Tin Man, Dead or Alive, Forceful Strike, Strike, and Galvanic. Those are pretty good, especially Galvanic. That really, really makes him quite difficult to take down. And um, as I said, he's got a fortune of one, and he's got a cost of 165 points. And Helen Miller has got 225 points. Okay, next character up is Jedrick Powell. He's a face, he's a lawman, human male, sheriff, infernal affairs, and agent. Um, fortune of one, 160 points. Quick of five, mind of five, attack of five. Sorry, attack of six, grit of six, fight of six, and level of three. Limit of three. And it's got his electron batons, which have got a piercing of zero, but they've got a rate of attack of two. Um, lasso which is a uh, range of six, uh, piercing a zero, uh, but has got a rate of attack of one. And it's real pistols, um, range of 15, rate of attack two, and minus two piercing. And uh, quick look on the back, he's on a small base, and he's got metal, quick on the dead, target priority, trail finder, and dead eye. And his special rules are tin man, dead or alive, gunfighter, form up on me, shrewd strategist, and underboss. Okie dokie. Next one up, we have Mercury Jones. Um, 160 points, same as Jedrick Powell. Uh, she's got a fortune of one as well. She's got a quick of seven, uh, mind of six, attack of six, grit of six, and she just gets better, a fight of six, and she's also got a limit of three. She is really, really hard. And um, she's got uh, support, Lawman, human, female, sheriff, internal affairs, agent. And uh, equipment is smoke grenades, which have got a range of eight and a rate of attack of one. Paris done on her uh, iron ass button, which has got a rate of attack of one and a pierce of minus one. And it's best base contact. And her atomic pistols have got a um, range of 10, pierce of minus two, and rate of attack of one. And on the back, along with the rest of the guys. she's uh, She's got the usual things that you'd expect from a passive like this. She's got metal, quick and the dead, agile, target priority, and moving target. Special rules are Tin Man, Dead or Alive, Counterintelligence, Elusive, and Skyleap. Really, really cool. Um, characters with things like Skyleap and Flight are very, very good in combat. Okay, so Ida Saxon. Um, fortune of One. Cost of 160, same as the other guys um, so far. Just Black Hoof has been five points more expensive. Um, so she's got a quick of six, a mind of five, attack of six, a grit of five, a fight of five, and a level of limit of three. Um, she's got pistol, chase pistol, which has got a range of 10, pierce minus one, rate of attack one, iron ass button. Um, the same as uh, Mercury Jones, which is minus one pierce, rate of attack of one. And uh, Eagle Hyper Volleygun, which got a range of 20, pierce of minus three, and a rate of attack of one. Now, this has got some pretty nasty things on for crits. It's shred, linked, and lethal. 
which means you're going to be doing lots and lots of damage when this actually hits. And especially seeing as a, a, her aim is six, so it's not too bad. Okay, um, she's got the usual things. She's got uh, Metal, Quick of the Dead, Target Priority, and Dead Eye. And her other skills are Tin Man, uh, Dead or Alive, Spirit Aim, and Undercover. And then finally, didn't do these any particular orders, picked them up as they were came out. I've got Furio Montoya, she's a face, lawman, human female, sheriff, infernal affairs, agent. 160 points again, so basically all of the guys all cost 160 with the exception of Blackhoof, who's 165, and Helena Miller, who is 225. She's got uh, one fortune, quick of six, uh, mind of five, attack of five, grit of six, fighting of seven, which is pretty good, and a uh, limit of three. Um, she's got smoke screen grenades, uh, smoke grenades, sorry, range of eight, and a rate of attack of one. And she's got uh, Sturginium Ep Epis, right, which is a nod to uh, Dystopian Wars, and because uh, this is set in the Dystopian Universe. And she's got a range of one inch, one minus one piercing, and a rate of attack of two. And it's got Brutal, Parry, Stun, and Disrupt. Right. Um, a lot of these characters all seem to be having weapons that allow them to stun people and take them alive, which is in fitting, in keeping with the actual characters themselves in the game. Okay, so uh, common rules. Uh, she's got uh, Metal, Quick of the Dead, Target Priority, and Prestigious. So she actually begins with Prestigious. Everybody else gets Prestigious if you take all of them in the faction, um, on the theme pack faction for Helena Miller. Uh, special rules, she's got Tin Man, Dead or Alive, Combat Master, Stone Cold Claim Killer, For the Boys, and Elusive. Right, so she's pretty good. So we have a quick look at all of our cards here now. Just pop those down, like that. And not a, very, not a bad posse at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause the video and I'll come back very shortly with the miniatures assembled. Hi and welcome back. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the miniatures now. Um, as you can see, they've been built and undercoated. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I've done these in quite a rush and I actually run out of super glue in uh, parts. And I also encountered a couple of problems which I'll run through as I go on uh, with the rest of this unboxing. Okay, so first up, here we've got the leader of the Infernal Investigations Posse. This is um, Helena Miller. Uh, as you can see, her jump pack is... Um, really well detailed she's taking off or landing depending on which way you want i suppose which way you want to look at it uh, i would say she's actually jet getting ready to jump off live a look so the positions of her legs the animation is fluid quite dynamic and um overall the attention to detail is fantastic okay i'm just going to pause i'm going to look at the next miniature Okay, and our next miniature up, sorry about the jump cut there, our next miniature cut up is uh, Ida Saxon. Um, as you can see, she's uh, carrying her rifle, she's got the owl on her shoulder. Um, again, really good attention to detail. And uh, Once again, please forgive the rushness on this. Um, none of the figures are based, they've just been temporarily glued onto the lip bases because they normally actually sand my bases before I actually paint them and then actually do the figures separately um, that way um, all my bases look identical okay as you can see she's quite ornate she's got lots and lots of attention to detail on her shoulders and on the rifle itself um, the owl looks fantastic and really nice miniature I'm quite pleased with her okay just got to pause once more and um, bring along the next candidate which will be Furio Montoya Okay, Furio Montoya, um, she's armed the, with her Sturigio Mepes, um, you know, quite a, a defensive pose. She looks like she's about to do a riposte of some sort against uh, whoever's attacking her. Now, if you notice on the back of the model, there's quite a large gap. Um, I couldn't get the bottom of her robe to fit quite correctly because the, plus, the resin had a quite a bad warp in the top of it when I actually came to assemble the model. I tried to use hot water to uh, re um, remold 
the actual piece, but it didn't work very well. So unfortunately, it is just glued in as best as I can, and there's a couple of gaps, which I will fill with uh, Milliput or uh, Green Stuff, and then um, I'm gonna reprime the miniatures. I've just primed them so it picks out the details so you guys can see them. But um, again, brilliant attention to detail. Uh, the sculptors uh, for War Cradle are fantastic. They've done a brilliant job. Okay, and here we have um, Jedrick Powell. Um, again, this is another model that I had a bit of a problem with, uh, with his cloak. Uh, the cloak just did not want to sit on properly. I think I must have got some problems with a warp, warp batch or something. It happens with resin kits sometimes. Um, as you can see on the back there, there is quite a large gap. And the, the actual cloak itself split in, is in two parts. And when I assembled it, one of the pieces of resin snapped in my hand when I assembled it. I think I might have been a bit too forceful, but you know, it happens. Okay, so again, this is one of my favorite models in the range. I like this model. Um, the animation is quite fluid. He's walking forward. He's looking down the barrel of his gun and he means business. Uh, great wee miniature. And again, you can't fault the detail. It's fantastic. Um, actually, the instructions for the assembly um, this bit could do with being a little bit clear because it doesn't show you exactly where to put things on uh, Jedrick Powell. But um, if you just persevere, you should be able to find it. I would suggest doing a dry run before you do anything and perhaps use blue tack to keep it in place before you actually glue it in place. Next up, we have um, Black Hoof 2020. Um, this guy's a beast of a model. He's quite large when he's built. He's very imposing. Um, he's rushing forward and he's about to lay down some hurt on some poor soul. Um, very, very good model. Now, um, the actual render on the back of the box shows him leaning further forward. Um, I actually tried to assemble it, leaning it a bit further forward and the model seemed a bit too top heavy. So I kind of get a more bipedal stance and uh, pushed it a little bit further back. Um, once again, um, you have to forgive any gaps. Uh, they're not very many on this model, but um, they're all gonna be sorted out once I actually get round to re-priming the model after I've um, put some milliput in uh, or some other green stuff. As you can see, there's a gap around his neck. But once that's painted, you won't even notice. Okay, and the final model now. Okay, this is the final model. This is Mercury Jones. Um, she's in a very dynamic pose. Um, she going over the top of a crate. As you can see, she's sliding herself forward with a gun in her hand. Um, lots of fluidity on the mo of motion on the legs. And the animation is fantastic, absolutely fantastic animation on this pose, very dynamic. Um, again, it's got bits that need filling, little gaps that need filling, and normally I would fill them before I prime them and clean them up, but I just didn't have chance to actually do that because I wanted to get this uh, unboxing done as soon as possible. Um, as you can see, she's uh, quite a lovely model. Um, face detail's brilliant. The wee um, ponytail on the back of her head, uh, that was a bit of a pain to put on, and I'm going to have to tidy that up a little bit because the glue seems to have actually melded to her helmet, so it actually looks like it's growing out of her head. <laughs> no, the, the helmet looks like it's actually part of the her. So I'm going to fix that uh, before I actually paint the model up. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause again for a second now and then I'll show you a group shot of all the models together and away we go. Okay, and here's a final shot for you guys. This is all of the Infernal Investigations posse in all their glory. Really proud, really good miniatures, fantastic sculpts. Um, I'm just a bit miffed that I rushed them so much. Um, I'm gonna take my time and paint them and get them all up and, done, up and dusted as soon as possible. Um, the fact that I've actually undercoated them um, in this colour uh, means that I'm part of my work's already done. Um, it just means a lot of shading and uh, washes and stuff, and picking things out. Um, for those interested, this is more than fine. Uh, the Fang um, from Games Workshop spray. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is actually um, have a look at some uh, other images that people have painted these models. There's a couple of guys over on the um, Dark Council 
forum on Facebook. If you haven't joined that council, I strongly suggest you join it. It's one of the best communities for any of the games that I've played in a long, long time. And I've been gaming for many, many years. Um, the community is fantastic. It's always full of helpful comments. No, um, no trolling, no flaming. It's always good fun uh, worth being a part of. And um, there's a lot of very, very talented people there who um, have got some amazing terrain and amazing paint jobs. And there's one of the gents there whose name slips my mind at the moment who did a fantastic job of um, the Infernal Investigations. Um, if I can find his name, I'll put it in the description below. Right, okay, so that's Inter Infernal Investigations uh, for Wildless Exodus from War Cradle Studios. It's available to buy directly from War Cradle for using their um, website, uh, which is www.wildexodus.com. WildWestExodus.com, or you can visit the um, the parent company, which is Whale and Games. You can also buy it on eBay as well from the War Cradle, uh, sorry, the Whale and Games um, official official uh, web shop, and a lot of reputable um, gamers shops and outlets around the world. As always, I'm Mark, and this is Gamers Web. For gamers, by gamers.